There she is, uh, Dion Bussey Reader. Good morning, good afternoon, Dion. Good afternoon, Denise. How are you? I'm doing great, doing great. You are the executive director of the Far Southeast Family Strengthening Collaborative, and mm -hmm. uh, one of the hardest working women in Ward Eight or in the city, because uh, you sought political, um, you've had political aspirations. You know your hat changes. You've been an entrepreneur, but it's all based upon your desire to be a community servant, to help folks in the community. And so now you're wearing the biggest pair of boots probably <laughs> that you've ever worn uh, yes. uh, over there at the Far Southeast Family Strengthening Collaborative at a time uh, when you couldn't be needed uh, more. So talk a little bit about what you all do there at the collaborative. Well, we've been around for 24 years. Uh, the Collaborative is one of the longest standing nonprofits in Ward 8. Uh, the work we do is really with families and children. Our goal is to really provide opportunities for families to be successful. We work with families as well as seniors. And we try to meet families where they are, provide them with opportunities for housing, employment, um, from everything. We do a little bit of almost everything now as it relates to families. We also do violence intervention work with our partners. We do work with um, Martha's Table in terms of providing services for food relief. We do work with Anacostia Bed and our business community. We know how important the amenities are in our ward. We provide services for our schools. We're actually engaged in preventing truancy for our families. So we're in 13 schools in Ward 8. Um, we manage the Congress High Senior Wellness Center, where I'm so excited about that. That's a great opportunity. Um, we have some very robust and active seniors in Ward 8, and they keep us on our P's and Q's. Um, one of the other things I'm excited about, we have a credit counseling and financial literacy program that we're actually helping people buy homes. And economic vibrancy for me is extremely important. I believe that's one of the quickest ways for families to come out of poverty. So that's our goal. So since uh, um, this pandemic uh, came upon us and the cities had to close down and people have been impacted uh, economically and our kids have been impacted as far as education is concerned. I mean, nobody in the city has been unaffected by uh, what this virus has, has brought on. Have, what, what kind of pressure has that put on um, uh, your organization to keep up with the needs of the community? I, that's interesting. I think we're working harder than we were working prior to this pandemic. I, honestly, I know we're putting in my team, we're putting in about 14 hours a day and that's at least six days a week. Um, it's been very, very challenging. Our families are hurting. Uh, one of the things I've said repeatedly since it started, as a country, we don't plan for poor. Um, we don't plan for poor people and even moving everything virtually. In our community, in Ward 8, a lot of our families use their phones to connect virtually. A lot of families don't have laptops. You know, in my home, I just, we, this pandemic has made me look at a lot of things differently. I have three laptops and a desktop. But when I look at the families we serve, many of them don't even have a desktop, not even a laptop, a tablet. So when you're looking at that and having to access things virtually, also, in addition to that, just have an access to resources. We have one grocery store in Warden, one. And you're talking about people having to get resources from that store, 75,000 residents. So in addition to the regular ongoing work we have to do to stabilize families, now what we're doing is ensuring that families have food, ensuring that families have the basic necessities so that they can live, toilet paper. I mean, those things we never thought we would ever need as much as we do today. So we have teams that are doing care packages. We're doing delivery of food. We've now given out in an access of about, no exaggeration, over $40,000 in gift cards so that we can make sure that our families are getting fed on a regular basis. We have small children that we're responsible for. So looking at all of those things, it just made us look at how we do this work differently. A lot of the families that we work with to get employed are employed in the hospitality industry. That industry is no longer an industry that we can know. We know that we can find employment opportunities. We don't know what this, what our restaurants are going to look like when this is all over. Prayerfully, everything comes back online. Things are opened up again. But we have families that we were excited about 
moving into those career opportunities. Now we have to look at something different. So all of those things are going to be on a backlog. We have families that's back to rent. I mean, people are not able to pay rents because they've lost their jobs. So this is, you know, now we have to, at least my responsibility now is looking at the, the aftermath. What's next? How do I handle this next? And in light of what's happening to black men, I'm just going to say it how it is. I'm now also focused on my, the men that's in the organization. I have men that are, that are working in challenging communities each and every day that I have to be concerned with. What about those guys? How do I protect them while they're protecting the communities that we're serving? So all those things compacted in this time is, is challenging. But we so we're confident that we can get through it though. Right, and that, that's where I wanted to go um, before we have to close, but the biggest question, I mean, I, I've got, I got an email the other day that talked about all the, all the companies that are hiring. Of course, Amazon was at the top of that list. <laughs> uh, I think for us, you know, or, and I say that as a resident of, in the community that you serve, uh, you know, transportation is, is a big issue, but uh, there's this whole list of companies that are hiring. Have, have you, what are you seeing, or have you been able to partner with any of them to place people in any of these jobs that they claim are out there? So it's, it's, it's a couple of layers to that. And I don't want to sound, um, I, I really try to look at the glass half full all the time. So I'm positive. I feel great about the fact that we're going to recover from this. Um, Denise, I try to be as innovative as possible. One of the things I share with my team is if we've been doing this this way for 20 years and we haven't seen the results that we know, let's try something different. I'm okay with that. Nothing beats a failure but a try. So let's try something different. However, you just hit the nail on the head. Transportation for our families to get to Springfield, we're talking over $15 a day, $15 an hour, $18 an hour. Most of your check is in transportation. So then, then how do you pay your rent? We're talking rents now in Ward 8, $1,200, $1,500, $1,800. $1, That's with no subsidy. If And, and, and subsidized rents is $1,200. So we're talking about a family of five living off of the $18 an hour job at Amazon. Great opportunity, nothing against Amazon, but getting our families there with no, with using public transportation, that's not always the ideal scenario. So we have to look at opportunities that does not require for the majority of their, their pain, their, their, their check to go straight to transportation. So we work with them around that. We work with opportunities and yes, we do partner. We have relationships with every training institute in the ward. In addition to that, I'm really big on, I don't want families just work, walking around with a whole bunch of certifications and no job. And then I want people to have career opportunities. I want them to have what you and I have. I think right. that opportunity right. is still there. Jobs are fine, but opportunities for careers, we want to introduce people to career opportunities, even in their 30s, even in their 40s. It's never too late. We want people to be able to strive to take care and sustain their families. I want us to get out of this mindset that people in Ward 8 want to be poor. That's wrong. That's a misnomer. That's not true. And we're going to stop saying that about Ward 8. And I'm so, not okay with that. So I don't know if you all are there, but what? how could people contact you if they wanted to? Oh, we're open. Yep, we're open. Okay. We call our regular number, 202-889-1425. We have essential employees that are out every day. You can reach us on our website, www.fsfsc.org. We're on all of the social media outlets. My staff is out every day. We do have essential employees that are in the community. But if you call our number, any service that you need, you'll be able to receive. I, people can call us on the weekend, even after five, you'll, you'll be able to speak to a live person. Dion, thank you so much for taking thank a couple of minutes with us. Me. And you know we're, we're trying to promote this and and really to support uh, nonprofit organizations like yours. So we have to talk some more and and figure out how we can support uh, your organization as you go out and support the community. We really Thank appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much for having us. We're looking forward to doing more with you. All righty. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. Bye bye. All right.